How you doing guys? This is Joss from Kingdom DTF. Welcome one more time to the channel. If this is your first time stopping by, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and also click the bell notification. So that way you know when we got new videos out there. So guys, as we can see here, we got our 912. It's a dual head printer. And today we're going to be doing some samples and we're going to be testing the white powder and the black powder. Uh, we have been doing DTFs for the past maybe two years now or almost three and we have never done a video about the black powder and white powder together so we're going to do some samples and we're going to press on different uh, colors for example on black shirts, uh, gray shirt, I got a red one also I think I got some cloth uh, orange one we're going to compare and, and we're going to take a look and see how it looks the design with the white powder and also the black powder. So stay tuned guys. Okay guys, so I just did the white powder. You already know how is the process. So then we got the black powder, okay? So I'm just going to grab my design. And I'm just going to put here just a little bit. All right, so some black powder there. Uh, we're going to put all of these just like we do like we do with our white powder right just make sure all all of that is covered and just be careful because uh black powder is a little bit more messy than the white one as you can see i'm not sure if you're seeing it but it's not that um easy to manage so just be careful just put it there a little bit so just check it put it in the back and let's do like we always do with the white powder let me see i think we got most of that cover and we got to do another one because we're going to do three whites and three colors one okay so for this one is the same so we grab a little bit of black powder all right and then we put it all over the design okay so we just finished putting the white powder also the black powder and this is how it looks the white powder and you already know this if you do DTF if you don't do DTF yet it's got to look like this you got to see that it's still like powdery until you melt it okay and this one here is the black one is the black powder okay uh, something I want to point is that the black powder it can get a little bit messy when you are putting it and when you shaking it so just be careful uh, with that I go to recommend to use gloves if you go to use a lot of powder especially the black one uh, because again like I mentioned is messy okay so one of the methods that we use to cure the um, powder is using an oven so this is one of the I can say it, if it's not the first one most most popular method to cure the powder in a oven like this one or maybe um, a bigger one uh, if it's not this one it's got to be like the second one I know a lot of people have been uh, using the heat press you know by hovering on top of the 
design, correct? But using an oven, you're going to cut at least half of that time because the oven, uh, you can put your transfer over there and you can close it and just put it, you know, between 250 and 275 for one minute maybe. Just keep an eye on that. And you're going to see that the powder is going to melt completely even compared with the maybe a heat press. Another method that you can use is a heat gun, but you know, once you get the heat gun, you're going to be just heating on top of the powder until you see that it start melting. And you know, it's not going to be too much even also. So, and you need to be careful because you put it, the heat gun too close to your uh, film is going to burn that film and then you're going to damage completely the design and you don't want that. So if you can get one of these open like this one, um, you know, it, it don't have to be from us, it don't have to be from any company uh, that sells DTS supplies because this type of oven you can really, you know, find it on any uh, retail store to be honest. So you just buy one and just use it for melt the powder. And that way you don't use the one that you got on your house, you know, you're, because over there you cook. And this one is going to be just for melting the powder of the transfers, okay? So try to find someone, something similar like this one. This one uh, can get a eight by 11 really easy here. Um, if you get it more bigger, it's going to be better because that way you can, you know, just put the A30 plus that is a 13 by 19 sheets. And that way you don't have to bend it a little bit because this one is a small. But this is m the most common size that you're going to start seeing this oven. And uh, just maybe for, I don't know, $100 or so, depending where you get it. You know, um, I don't want to mention any, any retail store, but you, you know what I mean. And then it's recommend that you cure the powder on something like this one. This is one of the um, pan that the oven came, but instead of using it this way, I'm using it uh, reversed because that way it's flattened. And you can just put, for example, you grab one of your sheets, right? And just put it there flat. And that way, uh, it get uh, melt the powder really quick and don't use the rack because the rack you know got the lines and if you put the sheet on the rack uh, that is not completely flat so what it's going to do the rack is going to get heated and you go it's going to leave the marks of the racks on your design and you don't want that so that's way you want something flat like this one so if this get heat, it doesn't matter because it's flat and it's not going to damage your transfer, okay? So there you got it. So um, you can use to cure uh, transfers, a heat press, an oven, a heat gun, uh, a conveyor also. You can use a conveyor, you know, you got the belt, you put it there and it's go through the oven and go, you know, exit to the other side. Also, you can use uh, a flash dryer uh, you know if you have an, a screen printing shop you definitely have one of these so you just put the transfer all on some place that is flat and then the flash driver all on the top of that okay and you cure it there and obviously the most common when you get a, an equipment uh, like a dual head printer is going to be the mini shaker okay so it's going to be the mini shaker that is going to cure uh, i mean put the powder shake the powder and cure that transfer for you so that that one is the most complete system an automatic system that you can get on the for dtf and you don't have to do like this one la, that is manually okay so you got six methods over there okay guys so we got to go ahead uh cure this all these transfers that I got here, for example, and we're going to press it on a couple of shirts. Using the oven, I had just found that putting the temp on 250 or 275 
for one minute that works for me really good at least in this oven remember that each oven is different so you will need to do your testing and see if 250 is good for you for one minute or is this um or if you need to increase you know uh the temp or if you need to lower it or also if you need to maybe instead of doing one minute uh, need to be a minute and a half or two minutes okay because the temp is going to be different ones so what i'm going to do is just going to put stay on okay then it's going to be conventional so we're going to wait just a moment for the oven to get heat all right and you want to do this in an open area that is ventilated to be honest um or if you got some type of uh, fume extractor, that's also a good idea to use if you are in, in a closed uh, office. Right now, I'm in one of my office. I don't have a ventilator here or any fuse or anything like that. But just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do it really quick and then proceed by just because this is just to show you. But normally, uh, I use this one, um, if I use it manually, I use it in an open area that, you know, uh, if I don't have the fume extractor, having the open area help me uh, or helps that fumes not to get to you that easy and it's super quick. So we're going to start with this one. So let's do, let's do maybe a minute or maybe we can do less to be honest because there are small and small sizes so the full minute i just do it for a by a by 11 to be honest and also the the 13 by 19 uh i have i do one minute at this temp but for this one i'm just going to put it just uh less than that okay so let me start my watch and let's see if the mini is okay or not and i just got this um grabber you know you can go to a dollar store and this is the one that you uh get for you know when you're doing barbecue or something like that but i have one of these you don't have gloves to uh get that okay so i'm not sure if you're getting this but you can see the powder is still melting and that is something that I want to you see the the smoke over there so that's something I want to to look at it to be honest and it's going to be almost a minute so let's let's wait for that minute to be honest and once the minute pass they all oh, you see now you can see all the smoke okay you see it so yeah that's why you need to to have a uh, a place open so we're going to stop it the minute went through are we going to easily without getting burned to get this one out so i use this one just to grab it in one and I just put it outside, okay? So, doing that, we can see, we, did, we see the shiny, the milk powder have melt correctly because it's shiny. So, now it's not too hot, so we, go, we can touch it. Okay, and nothing's going to happen. All right. So you see that at least in this brand, I, I can tell you the brand or leave it in the in the comments below. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can uh, get this brand if you like. Um, you know, I can even put the same model if you like it. So this is one. Okay. 
So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same for the black powder and see how that one comes, to be honest. The standard, the standard for DTF is the white powder. But then you got the black powder that is, according to the manufacturers, they were made for a block color migration okay so we're going to just wait a little bit also well not too much because it's hot so we're going to put it here and we're going to give that minute also for the black powder to start mel melting so let's just wait for the minute it's almost finished five four three two one and let's get this one out okay let's get it out are we going to take a look at that okay so let me just turn that one off and let's wait for this one to Ooh -wee. it's really hot all right, so I'm going to turn this one and you can see the back also is shiny. So do we touch already? Yep, we can touch. Okay, so this one, as you can see, uh, it's going to stay shiny too on the back. We're going to do the same for the rest of our crowns over there and we did this one too that is full color okay and also have the black powder on the back and we did this one the same one with the white powder so we're going to melt that and then we're going to press on different um different colors so you can see too okay guys so i just finished you know curing the powder so we take a look at the white one we can see it's good we come here and take a look at the black one and we see that it's good. It's the same design. This one is a white one. So we take a look at this. Then we take a look at this one. Okay, we compare. So have you noticed uh, on this one that got the black powder is going to have like a black border. So that's why a lot of people prefer to use the black powder when it comes sometimes to a black share. So when it's a black share, uh, sometimes people use this one. Sometimes they get, you can get a border or so, but that doesn't mean that it's something wrong with the white powder, it's not. The thing is that if you don't shake really well and really hard, to be honest, because if you take a look at the mini shakers they you know they they heat that this film really hard because they need to shake that powder um and get everything ex any ex excess out you're not going to have that problem with the white powder but some people uh don't do it that way or don't heat it that way that hard and that's why sometimes you get a little bit powder and that's why they using the black powder to do on the black shirts because even we can see a border right now here that border on the black shirt is not going to to get to to be able to see it this one is the color one okay with the black the white powder melted and then we got this one that is the color one and is black powder so it got cured the same way, you know, really nice. Okay. But on the front, you're going to see a different. So this different is going to be visible also on, on a, uh, maybe the shirt. So I just want you to be attentive for this. Okay. So we got this one with white powder you can you can see the white is still white but on this one that have the black powder right you can see that the white 
is not so white is kind of uh, you can set a little bit of gray okay so on white the black powder is going to have this effect okay the black powder is going to block this type of colors this one and this one okay and it's not going to come through the shirts so this one maybe it's not going to look that great on the red shirt and this one over here that is white if it's the white bait is not so good maybe I, I don't remember how much I put of, of the white base to be honest uh, maybe on a red shirt it can turn reddish or pinkish if you can say that okay so that's why it's important that you know how to balance your colors and your white under base so that way you get always the same results on your D TF transfers okay I got my white design over here and this one have the black powder so let's put it just right there and then I'm going to press the white design the same one and this one has the white powder okay so it doesn't matter which way I put it because I just want to press it so I'm going to um, give the same time and see how they look so then we're going to do um, well I go to do this color one maybe on the red one okay so let's do these two and see how they come out okay so let's press for 20 seconds medium to high pressure and let's wait for that and right now I'm pressing at 325 in a cotton cloth okay so this one is done and what I'm going to do is just leave it up to the side and just going to uh, cold peel it this one okay just to make sure how that looks Alright guys, so we got our red shirt over here. So we're going to take a look how this scene. So by looking at it right away from far away, right? And I can see a little bit of border of the black powder all the way in this one. Okay? But not in this one, obviously, because it's the white powder. So we go to take a look at the white powder so this one the way I see it it looks good um, this time did not blend with the shirt so you don't see it that is reddish or pinkish like some people like some time happens to the person that is doing this one if we switch to this one over here um, it doesn't look back either but we can see between the these two I'm not sure if, if the cam is catching it that it's still there's a difference I know it looks white but this is different so maybe you're going to see this one more lighted you know like more light or regular to your eyes and this one is going to be just a little a little bit dark but I don't see any red or anything coming through it either okay so taking a look at the colors one the colors one um, I just put a little bit of white in this one so I think 
if you take a good look you can notice that um, the border I know it looks white but at the same time is for the way I see it is getting just a little bit of that reddish that some people get sometimes because this color is truly hard you know it's really it's really strong and it's one of the most difficult sometimes uh to deal with it but i mean if you put it if you press it on right now on the rest shirt and this one is okay for you i mean it doesn't look bad either i mean that that is something i need to say so this one is the one with the black powder and again uh through the white i don't see any red color like reddish or anything like that coming coming through the design but the white is doesn't look so white to me it looks a little bit it, it, it's like a soft you know really soft white soft gray if you take good look at it i'm not sure if the cam is going to catch that but still to your eyes i think this one is going to look more bright to you versus this one that has the black uh the black uh, powder okay that is the one i did with the orange one so the orange one here i didn't a mistake so you can see the black powder there and also you can see the black powder powder all the way um you know through it so the black powder the way i see in it is that it's going to work better on a dark shirt like black shirt or possible you know gray shirt uh something like that but colors like this one i mean you're going to have this visible here and you don't want that so just stay with a white powder right but this one looks lighter and this one looks more uh dark to me a little bit but at the same time in this one i can see just a little bit of that orange that i want to come through the white ink so when that happens is what we call color migration that is it is the color of the garment or the piece of cloth or anything that you're pressing that is coming is it, it, it wants to come through the inks so that's a migration and this happened often uh maybe on shirts like this color red ones um possible shirts that have been sublimation uh, sublimate first and then you pressing the you know your design on top of that so all that kind of stuff white one and obviously the white one you don't want to use definitely the black powder because it looks awful <laughs> so this is this over here is a great mistake <laughs> so you don't want to do these guys okay i just press it so you can see because some people maybe they don't know and they're going to just press it and it's going to be awful so obviously we got the white ink over here with the white powder and this one is the black powder and as you can see the white it just turned completely gray so um, this one is not usable so don't give this type of press to your customer if you're using a black powder okay don't do it because it doesn't look good and then the last one is going to be obviously the black shirt that is the most people obviously use with dtf transfers for dark shirts and by taking a look this one right here is the white and this one is the black powder so I'm not sure if you're seeing what I'm seeing right now, but this one, I think this one was my mistake that I pressed, that I pressed and tried to peel it off really quick and maybe possible damage here and here. But um, by looking at it on a black shirt, it doesn't matter to me, black powder or white powder. For me, both look the same to be honest and uh, obviously because it's black it's not going to show that border like the other design that it was showing that okay 
Then we can take a look at the colors one. And this one is the white one and this one is the black. And the way I see it, I don't see too much different either, to be honest. Maybe you see it, so you got to decide which one looks different or not. But uh, comparing both of them at the same time, you know, if we take a look at here, the blue and this border over here, this one, uh, the white looks very, very similar. And also, also the gray, um, the gray uh, letters. Okay, they look very similar. So the only thing that I'm just double checking in this one is the color one, but for me it's good. So let me try to just grab this. Trashability is good, obviously, on DTF transfer with the white. And then you got then you got the black one just ability let's do this part here because I wanna you I missed I messed up here so this one stretch ability I don't see breaking this one is the black one stretch ability yeah it looks like you want to give out give out but it's not to be honest looks good right there and then the white one traceability is there okay so taking a look at the white powder and the black powder what we have learned is that if you want to use black powder i can say that you can use it definitely on black shirt and that border is not going to show and you're going to have your design you know full color you're going to have your design uh, looking good too okay but the standard just to let you know the standard on the industry for DTF is the white powder the black powder was made for this type of um, you know, for solutions that people were looking when they were using, for example, the red shirt and the orange, maybe green, um, you know, dark color like these ones and all of the kind of stuff. Okay. So there you have it guys. White powder versus black powder. I can say that both their work fine. And I know for sure because I got a lot of uh, customers that they purchased the black powder. I know for sure that they they are using it with the uh, black shirts because they a couple of them have been telling me that they like for some reason um, you know this is a, a question of uh, why you like for you or for your customers. So they like better the black powder on black shirt. But to be honest, you can use both if you like, or you can use only black, or you can use only white. But if you're planning to do like white shirts, um, you know, light colors and all of that, use the white. White is a standard one. Then the black one is for when you need it. Okay. So I think that's it, guys. For this video, I'm going to finish here. The, now that you see the results. And I want to say thank you so much, guys, for, for being part of this community uh, here, Kingdom DTF, on YouTube, also on Facebook. If you have any question, just put your question below the video. And thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Click the bell notification. Uh, my name is Joss from Kingdom DTF. I will see you in the next one. So keep printing.